brother. Now, I want to show you what the daughter of the woman who ride the beast is up to. One of the daughters, because everybody always says she the Catholic Church. No, the Catholic Church has drunk of her wine too, as well as all other religions. Brother, I want, anybody here ever heard of purgatory? Y'all yeah. heard of purgatory? Okay. Anybody know where purgatory come from? We about to find out where purgatory come from. And I want us to understand how much this woman has made us of this earth drunk with her wine. Brother Judah, right here, with, this is out of, this is a history of purgatory. And when he done read, and I'll give y'all the book in case y'all want to find these books yourselves and read them. I wasn't buying the books, but I did make some copies of certain pages. <laughs> Go ahead. How you doing? That's how you do it. Now, just the underlying portion I got right there, Brother Judah. So Prayer we get out of here. for the dead and indulgences. Prayer for the dead and indulgences. Go ahead. The Catholic Church teaches that the fate of those in purgatory can be affected by the actions of the living. Its teaching is based also on the practice of prayer for the dead mentioned as far back as 2 Maccabees 12, 42 to 46. Mm -hmm. Considered by Catholics and Orthodox to be part of sacred scripture. Now, if you go and read 2 Maccabees on your own, verses 42 to 46, I'm, for the sake of time, I'm not going to read it because I don't want to make this lesson another half hour long. Brothers and sisters, basically what the Catholic Church did is they made an apostate version of what the Maccabees did. What happened was they had war against some of the Greeks. But a lot of men in Judas' army had fell that day. But Judas and them still, Judas, seeing that his men was losing a little faith, and do you know what he did on the battlefield? The man starts singing words out of the book of Psalms and was singing them loud. And it said the men got riled up and they wowed out and whooped on these Greeks. And basically they, they rested because that because they fought right before the Sabbath. So the Sabbath came in. They all rested in the city. Then they came out after the Sabbath and their custom was to go and gather all these dead brothers off the battlefield. But guess what happened? They found on, the, on every brother who died in a war, every one of them had amulets and charms of a goddess of the Jamnites on them for good luck. And the brothers, it said that when they seen that, they thanked the Lord of heaven who revealed the things done in secret because they all sad that so many brothers fell. But everybody, every single body of the slain Israelite had these charms on them. So they didn't just go into the battle with the most high and they hired all of them. Some of them thought they could do a little extra and have these lucky amulets and idols hidden in their clothes for protection. The same way some of these cats, like in China, they'll get certain tattoos to protect them in war. So if you swing a sword at me, you ain't going to cut me. Why? Because I got this tattoo on me. <laughs> no, that's real. But... That's what they did. So what happened was when Judas seen what happened and seen the Lord revealed it, among all the brothers, they gathered about 2,000 drachmas, whatever that is, of silver, and sent it to Jerusalem to the priest and had the priest make a sin offering for them brothers, hoping that the Most High would have mercy on them and pray. And it said, because Judas and them believed in the resurrection. So that they, they knew these brothers would have to stand before the Most High. So since they did die on the battlefield in war for Israel, Most High, have mercy on them. But that don't mean they paid money for the dead. What it means is they sent enough money back so animals and stuff could be brought on behalf of them and sacrifices be made on the altar. Because you couldn't give money literally for a sacrifice. It could be part of a trespass offering, but that was through ignorance. Them brothers willingly did what they did. Brothers and sisters, that's the understanding I got out of reading 2 Maccabees. But the Catholics read that and they made an apostate version of what Judas and them did out of righteousness. Continue to read that, the underlying part. An indulgence is a remission before God of the temporal punishment due to sins whose guilt has already been forgiven. So an indulgence is the ability to go before God and get forgiveness for a sin that someone has done, right? Mm -hmm. Continue. Indulgences may be obtained for oneself or on behalf of the dead. Prayers for the dead and indulgences have been popularly envisioned 
as, dis as decreasing the duration of time the dead spend in purgatory. So, do y'all see purgatory is a place where they suffer when someone dies? This Catholic doctrine, the Maccabees and them didn't teach right, this, right. but this is Catholic doctrine. They preach it's a place when we all die, we're going to be stuck between heaven and hell to get some judgment on which place we're going to go. And this indulgence was an ability to help the decision happen faster. Go ahead, continue to read, brother. Abuses. Because of the great demand from associations that their favorite prayers, devotions, places of worship or pilgrimage, their processions and meetings be enriched with indulgence. Do y'all know what that means? Everywhere we go, everything we say, everything we do, the Catholics in the Middle Ages, in the so-called Dark Ages, were being taught that everything needed a blessing of indulgence. If we have a meeting, we need an indulgence blessing so that if it's any sin among us, that won't hinder God blessing our meeting. Our fields, our parades, everything need indulgences. Go ahead. There was a tendency to forge documents declaring that such indulgences sometimes of extraordinary character had been granted. Indulgences were attached to many works that were not only good, but also served the common good. Mm -hmm. Both religious and civil churches, hospitals, what is this? Et Et oh, um, leprosaria, where people who had leprosy were separated. Mm -hmm. Oh, I'm looking, I'm looking at the eye. Oh, okay. <laughs> the heck happened to the L, all right, that's the L, all right. But I also served the, Leprosaria, but also serve the common good. Both religious and civil churches, hospitals, leprosaria, charitable institutions and schools, and also roads and bridges. So everything, do y'all know what that means? Like right now I'm on a road. We built we built a new bridges in Niagara Falls. They would be praying to the to, to God through the Pope to bless the road job, right. bless the hospital, bless the charitable organizations, bless the everything needed these Remissions called indulgences, right? Mm -hmm. So you gonna continue reading that here. That go with that. The later Middle Ages saw the growth of considerable abuses, so su such as unrestricted sale of indulgences by professional uh, patronizers. Patronizers. Pardoners. Pardoners. Oh, I'm sorry. Partners. What happened is, as the Dark Ages was coming in. They had people who were professional partners, meaning their life, their job was to come around seeing who need indulgences and getting paid to make sure people get forgiveness from God. Professional partners. Professional partners. Continue. Who were sent to collect contributions to the project. In many cases, the preaching of these out of ignorance or shrewdness went far beyond dogmatic teachings. Some of them even dared to promise that the damned would be released from hell. Do y'all see that? They was even going around saying, look, if you give us this money, if your loved one is in hell, which one, which loved one you think in hell? I'll get them out. And they know that indulgences were what was collected to build the famous Basilica of St. Peter, that thing that everybody go over Rome to visit, where the Pope lived, that Basilica of St. Peter in the Vatican Square, that was built off the money of this false religious practice, promising people that if you got loved ones in hell, we'll get them out. And if they stuck in purgatory, we'll go to God, of course through Virgin Mary, <laughs> and um, make sure they go to heaven and not hell if there's a decision. Go ahead, Brother Judah, go ahead. Okay. Uh, when far beyond dogmatic teaching, some of them even dared to promise that the damned will be released from hell. The most well-known and debated question is the indulgence granted for the building of the new St. Peter's Basilica in Rome. So if that costs $10 million as a project, we got to get $10 million. We got to do enough indulgences that add up to $10 million. Continue. The Catholic doctrine of communion of saints teaches that this work of cleansing or sanctification does not have to be done entirely by the person directly concerned since all Christians living and dead are united as a single body that has Christ as head. Uh -huh. The holiness of the prophet, the holy, the holiness of one prophet's others. So what they said was, look y'all, we the body of Christ. 
if somebody was a member of the church, and even though they died, they still part of the body of Christ, right? So even if someone did and they can't make indulgence for themselves no more, y'all who are alive in the church, y'all can make indulgences for them. Continue. The holiness of one prophet.